about a company's identity, image and reputation. So what is identity? Identity is how a company is reflected. They have to reflect the company because if not, the reputation is damaged. Because of trends, company needs to constantly keep up with the public. This then forces company to focus on different ways to keep their company relevant and competitive. If organization can constantly perform well in sustaining a consistent image over the years, they can achieve a favorable reputation and hence gain strategic and competitive advantage such as high employee satisfaction and commitment, more familiarity with company's products and services, increases in sales, better relations with the community, opinion leaders, investors, and shareholders. Identity. Identity is actually how the public, aka customers, community, investors, and employees view the company. Identity then can be broken up into four, which is name, logo, motto, and products. Name, I'm using big names here like Nike, Nilofa, and Starbucks. When I mention those names, their logo automatically starts to pop in my head. Like Nike with their Stein logo, Starbucks with their Lady, Lady Liberty, and also Nilofa with that unique handwriting. Motto, on the other hand, when I mention Nike, you will know the motto, just do it and products like what products they offer. Nike offering the sports brand, Nilo for offering fashion brands, and also Starbucks with beverage. So, what are the aims of creating an identity? One is to create a single, steadfast, and clear visual identity of a company and their sub-brands. For example, as I mentioned before, Nike being a sports brand, Starbucks being a beverage brand, and Nilo for being a fashion. Two, is project the company or organization as a professional, reliable, and contemporary organization. And third, leverage the company brand equity and standardize the visual presentation. Hey everyone, this is actually Alpha from the future, but I forgot to mention this. Identity. Identity means to define a company. To define a company, you need skills such as developing a strategy, design attractive brochures, and more. This then has to fall in line with the company's vision, values, people, products, and services. I've used Nike, Nilofa, and Starbucks, but to give you a clearer example, let's use McDonald's. So, McDonald's name is obviously McDonald's. This company's logo is very well known for their letter M in yellow and red. Their motto is, I'm loving it. This then has to fall in line with the company's vision and values, which is to be the customer's favorite place to eat and drink. To fit the people prospect, McDonald's came up with food that is closer to our hearts, like nasi lemak ayam Magdi, bubuk Magdi, or even salted egg french fries that was all the rage, and for good reasons, considering how yummy they are. And finally, their service. McDonald's is very well known for their service of cleanliness and quick customer service. In conclusion, because these companies have identified themselves so well with a clear name, logo, motto, products that is in line with the company's vision, values, people, services, and products, when the public hears McDonald's, Starbucks, Nilofa, they automatically know who these companies are. They know what to associate these companies with. So that is all from me. I will pass the floor to the next presenter. Now I will be presenting about the types of corporate identity. There are three types of identity which are monolithic, endorsed and branded identity. That is according to the book Corporate Communication, uh, is inspired by the Wally Owens framework. And sometimes it is also being referred as brand or branding. Let's go to the first type. First of all, we got monolithic corporate identity, which refers to a corporate brand that associated with the organizations. The structure of this identity would be where all products and services, buildings, official communication and employee behaviour are labelled with the same company name. So basically, it can be said that the entire company uses the same visual style, logo, car value, uh, and etc. And the company or organisation can be instantly recognised since it can be seen almost everywhere. For example, Disney, Nike, McDonald's, Petronas and Apple. The second type is Andros Identity. Endorsed identity refers to businesses or product brands that are endorsed or supported by the main organization or what we call as parent company. So for this identity, the subsidiary company or brand have their own style, but the parent company can, still can be seen in the background. 
Some examples that can be found in Malaysia would be Media Prima, who is the parent company of TV Tinker and Hot FM. Besides that, we also have WhatsApp and Instagram, which is the subsidiary company to Facebook. If you realize, whenever you open the WhatsApp or Instagram app, you could see from Facebook on the screen. Another example is a car manufacturer like General Motors, which owns a large amount of automobile brands such as Chevrolet and Cadillac. The third type is branded identity. This type of identity is referring to a structure where the organization or company has numbers of brands that have their own identity and style, which means that they have their own brand names and values of their products or services until it seems like the brand is unrelated to each other and to the parent company. You could say that this identity is the opposite of monolithic identity. One example that I could take is Nestle, which is a very well-known company. I'm not sure if you guys know this or, or not, but brands like Milo, Maggi, Coco Crunch are owned by Nestle. Those brands are so popular until it seems like they have their own company, which of course make their parents' company become invisible. So those brands that I have mentioned, their parent company is in no position to communicate or speak of its products since those brands are following this identity structure. Hence why they also don't follow the name or the core value of the parent company. As for this type of corporate identity, it can happen due to the subsidiary company which is the brands that are selling products or services in different market segments. As you can see on the screen, this figure will help you to understand more about the differences of these three types of corporate identity. Now I will explain about shaping identity. Basically, from my understanding, shaping identity is when a company or organization is trying to make their own company identity. First of all, for a company or organization to have their own identity, they have to have a vision. And this vision should be covering the company's or organization core value, uh, their objective, the principle, and also the goals or aims of the organization. Next, you have to have the names and logo of the company or organizations as it is one of the main things that a company or organization should give more attention to. But between names and logo, the logo is actually more important to the corporate since it is the visual that people can instantly see. Logo are important as it is to point the identification and as the symbol of the company and also to show the connection between the company with the subsidiary company. Moreover, the value of a company or organization uh, will be impacted by its corporate branding strategy success, which means that a good and eye-catching marketing showcasing the company or organization names and logo will help to boost the reputation. We can take the brand Nike as an example. Furthermore, there are times when a company or organization change their name or logo and this is to show that they are changing their identity or to make it more relatable to the company. Uh, some examples of a company or organization that do rebranding are Twitter, which were known as Audio at first. Then we got Backrock, which is now known as Google. Starbucks changed their logo. Domino's Pizza also changed their logo. And we all know the brand Yahoo. Before it is known as Yahoo, uh, the original name is Jerry Guides to the World Wide Web. All this company or organization that I have mentioned had successfully rebranded their company which in turn lead them to gaining more values. Uh, that is all for the types of corporate identity and shaping identity. I'll pass this presentation to the next presenter. Okay, thank you Jenna for your presentation. Now I will talk about uh, identity management. So according to templify.com, identity management is a process where you control and manage all the relevant visual aspects and also design elements. So we have six steps uh, in doing uh, identity management. So I will explain one by one. Okay, so the first one is to conduct an identity audit. Sometimes company also will bring in a few external consultants. Why? Because uh, they want to avoid uh, fake information and they also want to uncover uh, relationship and inconsistencies. They also want to get uh, to get deep understanding uh, about the organization before proceed uh, to the next step. The second one is to set an identity objective. We need to uh, ensure that we have a clear goal uh, in doing a project. So a senior management will set a, a goal on how certain uh, people will react to a certain thing. So uh, for example, if we put a new logo or a new product, how people will react to that. Uh, does it will 
attract uh, a lot of people or just uh, people will stay uh, ignore uh, about the changes. So the negative side uh, is that the senior management tend to see things uh, internally focused and have difficulties to see things from the viewpoint of their constituencies or uh, the public view. So we will take example uh, from KFC. Before this, uh, KFC is known as Kentucky Fried Chicken. But uh, nowadays, uh, they change uh, the company names to only KFC. Since uh, they, their target is to attract more health conscious Americans, so they need to remove that fried word uh, from the uh, logo. So the third one is to develop designs and name. So when we want to remodel uh, our uh, brand name, we need to uh, consult with uh, consultant first. Why? Because um, if there's any um, similarities in other brands name, there might be a, a very serious issue later. So for example, if a company want to go uh, to global expansion, um, adding the word uh, international might be uh, a good alternative. And when we want to remodel logo, we need to uh, ensure that the logo must reflect um, accurately to the company's reality what the company wants to tell people uh, about their mission about their target or everything we can take a look about uh, for example Dunky Donut so uh, before Dunky Donut's logo is like this and nowadays they have changed it to this one so um, when they want to uh, this happened uh, because when they want to expand their market to uh, unfam unfamiliar uh, places, the image of steaming coffee uh, besides uh, of the uh, name uh, shows that they also serve uh, coffee for coffee lovers. The fourth one is to develop prototype. So uh, for products, prototype uh, packaging shows how the brand image usually will be shown uh, or used uh, in advertisement. So for example, when we want to print the logo uh, on a t-shirt, on cap, on the apron or something else, and uh, we want to see the final products before we show it to the public. But uh, outsiders like uh, people who are not involved in the uh, designing uh, process, for example, um, just office workers uh, in the company might uh, negatively critique the product. The second last is to launch and communicate. So sometimes, for example, a really famous gaming phone brand, when you want to release a new, uh, a brand new uh, phone, the public will get too excited about it. They tend to uh, dig more information um, from the company. So then uh, here, public relations staff need to play their role to uh, invite the media and at the same time not to expose too much information to the public so that whenever uh, they have teaser, they have uh, their launching program, people will get excited uh, to that product. So during press conference, design uh, of the product should be clearly uh, displayed in a variety of contexts and senior executive also uh, need to explain the, extra, uh, the strategy clearly and carefully uh, behind the program. And the last one is to use social media to attract more public attention. So for example, uh, when they want to launch a new product, they will do a challenge in TikTok. So people will know about that product in TikTok first. So then they acknowledge that, oh, it's a brand new product. We need to try this because a lot of people uh, are doing challenge and we need to uh, have a look about this product. And the last one is to implement the uh, program. It can take years uh, for big com uh, to the big companies to uh, implement uh, a certain program or a certain uh, new rules. Uh, the best uh, approach is to ensure consistency, consistency uh, using a new identity program uh, is to develop a new identity st uh, standard. So I think that's all from me. I will pass the presentation to Ami. Thank you. So, next I'm going to talk about a corporate image. What is definition of corporate image? Image is defined as the perception that is given to ex employees and the public of the policies, staff and activity of an organization. The image is what the public is supposed to see when the corporation is mentioned. In the absence of active efforts, corporate image simply happens. It is how a company is perceived. 
The image of an organization is a feature of how an organization is viewed by its constituents through names, logos, self-presentations, including representations of its corporate vision based on all the messages it sent out. According to Argenti 2006, image is a reflection of an organization's identity. In other words, it is seen from the viewpoint of its constituencies. Depending on which constituency is involved, an organization can have many different images. The perceptions are based on the industry itself, what they have read about the organization previously, what experiences their friends have had with the organization, and what visual symbols they recognize. To illustrate the situation, if someone were to talk about an apple, fruit wouldn't be the first thing to come to mind to many. It could be the brand of current technology such as iPhone, iMac, iPad, etc. However, management may actively try to shape the image by communications, selecting and promoting the brand, using the symbols and publicizing its actions. Corporations who aim to form their image are similar to people who dress respectfully, cultivate courteous manners, and deliberately select their words in order to make themselves competent, reliable, and likable. The image should match reality both in personal and the corporate case. If it doesn't, the opposite of the one expected will be the outcome. Corporate image differs from corporate identity as image is an immediate mental picture of a company. It is based on initiative taken by the company and it can be built quickly. If the company wanted to change the image, it is relatively easy compared to identity. In simple words, corporate image is simply the image of the creator of your products. That could be you, your company, or any group within your organization. Why is your corporate image crucial to your performance? It determines the way you are talked about the rest of the world. The right image establishes a bond of confidence between you and the identity, helps you to accomplish your goals and raise your income. The wrong one will block your targets from being reached and defeat your bank account. The marketplace will create one for you if you do not create the image you want for yourself or your business. Since many, especially rivals, have their own agenda in the marketplace, it is doubtful that they would brand you with a corporate image that is as favorable as the one you would build for yourself. Next, I will talk about the functions of the corporate image. Corporate image has an important function as creating trust and reliance. There are six functions of corporate image. The first one is it guides and strengthens the company to achieve wilder and much known target. Number two, it provides to balance the needs between the company and the target audience which sometimes had conflict. Number three, it evaluates the difference of the employee and a qualified teamwork. Number four, knowledge and skills have the opportunity of continuously improve in the environment it created. Number five, it increases the value of the brand, products, and the service of the company. And the last one is, it creates an environment in which it is not afraid of any changes. Image of a corporation is more meaningful than the appearance. Hello everyone, my name is Nurul Sakinah binti Muhammad Rozi. My metric number is 051239. So, based on Madam Zana's slide share, there are seven factors that determine an organization's image, including after sales service, advertisements, industrial relationships, package, effect of a stock market, physical appearance, and customer services. Now let's talk about after sales service. After sales service is any service provided after a customer has purchased a product. It may be provided by a retailer or manufacturer or a third party customer service or training provider. I give you some examples like support regarding warranty services, follow ups for training or repair and upgrades like Cuckoo brand or Kawi brand always does. Companies use this as a business strategy as it typically leads to higher customer satisfaction, brand loyalty, and even word-of-mouth marketing. Next is advertisements. Advertising helps change your outdated or negative perceptions of your business if needed. It can also help with increasing the company's visibility within the industry and helping you attract more partners that can expand your business. Marketing communication activities also focus on promoting the company's image itself. The more the consumers perceive that the advertising and marketing communication of a company reflect the company's values well, the more favorable image the consumers have about the company. Now let's move on to the industrial relationships. Industrial relationships is the study of the laws, conventions, and institutions that regulate the workplace. It promotes the welfare of the workers and the employers. A company should strive to take care of the rights and welfare of the stakeholders and build good relationships among the employers, distributors, service suppliers, clients, and customers in order to maintain a good company's image. 
Next is package. Remember that the fundamentals of a branding package consist of the following elements. The first one is your branding package should convey what is special about your business and tells your story. Next is your branding package should resonate with customers and the broader community in a positive way. And the last one, your branding package should make you recognizable so that your company's image stand out prominently among the competition. The fifth factor is the effect of the stock market. Stocks can be a valuable part of a company's investment portfolio. Owning stocks in different companies can help you build your savings, protect your money from inflation and taxes, maximize income from your investments, expand your network, and therefore establish a good company's image. The sixth factor is the physical appearance. The visual expressions of an organization provide a powerful way of differentiating the company since they represent the distinctive attributes of a corporation. CVIS, Corporate Visual Identity Systems, like the logo, the name, the color, the topography or the slogan of the company, or the company's aesthetic, like the interior design or the design of their retail stores or the stuff apparels. These elements present the value and philosophy of a company and emphasizes the specific attribute of the company's identity. Remember, the more positive attitude the consumers have towards a company's corporate visual identity system, the more favorable image the consumers have about the company. The last factor is the customer services. This dimension is divided into corporate behavior and management communication. Perceptions of an organization are determined by the services from the managers and staffs. Communication in customer services includes emails, phone calls, letters, complaint forms, and much more. Remember, when you receive a favor request, be sure to respond as soon as possible. And then you might want to apologize for their negative experience. Don't forget to acknowledge your mistakes and explain what may have gone wrong. After that, you might want to offer them an incentive or a discount or a refund, anything that suits the situation. Lastly, allow them to respond with further questions or concerns or comments. Another subtopic is why image and identity are more important today. Identity and image make an impression. The way the stuffs are dressed, the website, the business cards design, the cleanliness of the store, and much more. In this case, presentation is everything. Next is image and identity create recognition. You probably can spot on Apple device or a Coca-Cola can or Nike or Adidas from afar. It actually takes a lot for a brand to be this recognizable. It's not just about logo or slogan. A brand image encompasses with both visual elements and brand association like speed, quality, or reliability. Identity and image also show how put together you are. Imagine walking into a restaurant where every server just wore whatever they wanted or a department store where no one wore a name tag. How could a customer identify who is who and who to call for help? So, a polished brand image is necessary to show that you know how to run your business. Next, identity and image build credibility and equity. A company needs to be consistent at maintaining a stable brand image, be it the freshness of your product or your packaging. It contributes to the consumer's relationship with your brand. The bottom line is image and identity matter. It is so important to design your brand image and identity to convey what you really want it to say. Be intentional about your brand because people aren't just buying your product and service. They are buying what your brand stands for. Hi, and my, for my part, I'll be explaining about reputation. Without further ado, let's go. Um, what is reputation, to be honest? What is the meaning of reputation? So according to the dictionary.com, uh, reputation is a favorable and publicly recognized name or standing for merit, achievement, and etc. And by now, we know that we also have our own reputation inside ourselves. And if you have a company or an organization, they also have their own reputation. And if and when it comes to building a solid reputation, um, an organization's identity and image, they have to be aligned. And when, what I meant by aligned is they have to cooperate well with each other. It cannot be, um, it cannot be in balance. And let's say if you have a company, a very well-established company, a good, a good company, of course you want to maintain it for a very long time, right? So to maintain a good company, a good reputation, I mean, a company they should 
display a rational and consistent set of image to the public. You have to take it very serious. You cannot be dilly-dally about your company's image. And a company also have to shape or design or create a unique identity. Um, what I mean by this is once um, once the consumer uh, knew about our company uniqueness or what's so special about our company, they will come for us. And I mean that in a very good and positive way. So um, in the next slide, I will be talking about reputation caution, which stands for R and Q. So what is reputation caution? In my opinion, reputation caution and corporate reputation, it is the same thing. And about the corporate reputation, I will be explaining that in the next um, part. Um, and for you guys' information, I do try to find a bit about Harris from Rome, maybe a picture of him or a little bit about his biography in on the internet, but I can't really find it. Maybe I mislocate in the reference book. Please, um, pardon my mistake. So, yeah. A reputation quotient, it is a measuring method, a very thorough me measuring method that was created by Harris von Braun. It is um, to analyze the perception of multiple stakeholders, regardless whether it's, whether it's internal or external. Every opinion or every perception matters. And I believe a reputation quotient is very essential because the good or bad reputation of uh, your organization or your company, it is depend on the, st on the stakeholder's perception. So it is very important in my opinion. Right, in the next slide, I will be talking about the corporate reputation. You can refer it to your slide as well. So uh, the corporate reputation, it has six aspects or six drive. And I will touch uh, upon uh, one of the drive, which is social responsibility. And I think uh, the meaning of the social responsibility, like if you have a company or an organization, you need to know and you need to leave your company to support the good causes. And you have to be aware of the environmental and the community responsibility because um, consumer they know what they want so you need to um, pay attention to them because if you neglect these certain things it will lead you uh, it will lead your company to a very negative way and the other one is product and services so product and services is also considered as one of the aspects in the corporate reputation and I think it's this um, I think it's referring to like if your company releasing a product or giving out services, you have to make sure that it's, it is innovative. That's the first one. And it, and also they have to make sure that um, the product or your services are in high and excellent quality. You cannot give or release a product in a low quality because more, many consumers, they believe in quality instead of quantity. And I think that the point for stand behind under the products and services, I think it's referring to the what uh, what you believe in or what your company stand for or what your company believe for so why are you why why are your company why did your company release this kind of product why do you uh why do you why did the company your company giving out those certain types of services what are what are the benefit benefit of it i think that is what I, uh, they are referring to so um, the rest, I think that you can read it in the slide because it is quite simple to understand. Uh, yeah, that is all from my part and now I will give the floor to uh, the next presenter. Thank you for watching and thank you for listening. Meanwhile, reputation can be simply understood whereas it is assessed based on the perceptions of all of its constituencies while on the other hand, reputation differing from image due to it being built up over a time and at a given point of time it is not simply a perception and in addition to that reputation differing from identity due to it being both internal and external constituencies product there are several points on the importance of reputation and the first one is widening the company's opportunity to compete and survive in the market meaning to say that if you have a good corporate reputation then there are chances that your services and products will sell very well and more and more people will want to do business with you secondly help companies in gaining stakeholder support in times of controversy and crisis meaning to say that if your company has a good reputation in the corporate world but it's going through a controversial moment in this present time, then you will have the support of your stakeholders to help you surpass it. Next, 
the changing environment for business, whereas a great corporate reputation will enable business to continue advancing and development throughout the process, making a name for the company, which will allow its popularity to grow, thereby attracting more attentions from the public eyes towards your products and services, especially new clients. Lastly, attract and retain the best talent meaning that the company with the best reputation will attain great opportunities in recruiting more new people with set of skills to contribute their ideas towards the company in achieving its goals in various ways that is all for me thank you